In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A11 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're going to walk you through how to use the Samsung Galaxy A11 for beginners. We're going to start by going over how to use the buttons, where to find everything on the phone, how to download apps, and also um, how to send text messages and make calls. We're going to start with just those basic items, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So first thing, you will find all the buttons for the phone on the right side here. So volume up, volume down, and the power button. Tap that power button, um, it will wake up the phone. Tap it again to turn the screen off. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, the phone is gonna wake up and go to sleep. If you actually wanna turn off the phone, you can hold down this power button here and it will take you to this screen. You can either tap uh, power right here to turn it all the way off or you can tap the restart button to um, restart the phone. So those are your two options there. And when you wanna unlock the phone, you'll simply just slide up. And now I have a password on the phone currently, so I would have to just put in the password. But if you don't have a password on the phone, you would just slide up and the phone would just unlock itself. And we can just do our password here and that will take us into the phone. So those are the basics there. Now, one more thing. On the left side of the phone, you will find the SIM tray. If you do have a SIM card that you were using in another phone, you can just put it in here by using one of these SIM tools. It should come in the box of your phone. So just an important note there. So next, let's talk about how to navigate the screen. Now, at the bottom of the screen, you'll find these three buttons here, uh, a menu button, home button, and a back button. Now your home button, the little circle at the bottom here, is always gonna take you back to this main screen. So if I open up, for example, uh, my, um, let's see, if I wanna open my Google Chrome to go to the internet, if I wanna go back to that main screen, I just use this home button and tap, and that'll take me right back to the main home screen. No matter what you're doing, if you tap this, it'll take you back to this screen. Even if I'm over on this page and I tap the home button, I'm always gonna go back to this main screen. So that's what that button does. Now, if you hold down this button, it actually will launch your Google Assistant, and then you can, you can ask it to do different things. So right now, this little uh, voice thing at the bottom here is listening. So just to show you one more time, if I hold down on this, this little uh, guy right here is showing you that it's listening to what you're saying and it's trying to figure out what it wants you or what you want it to do. So you can ask your assistant to set a timer for you. You can ask it to search the internet for a fact. You can ask it when your favorite sports team is playing again. Whatever, it's gonna search Google for whatever you're asking and then give you a response. So that's kind of cool. On the left side here, you'll find what's called your recent apps button. I called it the menu button before and that was incorrect. This is your recent apps button. So whenever you open up one of these little icons here, these are apps, their app is short for application. Think of it like a computer. On a computer, um, they're called programs. On a phone, they're called applications. So that's just the difference there. And on a phone, we don't call it an application. For short, we just call it apps. So these are all little apps that you use or little programs. And whenever you open up one of these apps, um, if you go back home, that app is still open. It's just running in the background of the phone. So when I tap my recent apps button here, I can see all the different apps that are currently running on the phone. Now this is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you can easily get back to something you were working on earlier because it's not gonna automatically close itself unless you close it. The downside is you will have things constantly running in the background of your phone and if too many things are running, it will slow down the phone. So be mindful of how many things you have running. If you notice your phone is running slow, you can always tap the recent apps and you can swipe up to close out some of these programs so they're not running in the background. Now, if you ever wanna get back to something you were looking at or working on earlier, you could just tap the recent apps button and swipe over and I can go right back to, you know, for example, this wallpaper app 
and keep looking at the different wallpapers I was trying to use for my phone. So it's a great way to help you, one, get back to things you're working on, and two, to close out things that you no longer want to use. One last thing, if you tap this button here, you have a close all button. If you're finished with everything and you want to close out all those applications so that your phone runs faster, just tap close all and now everything will stop running in the background. So that's what the recent apps button does. Now on the right side here, we have the back button. Now this is something that's gonna help you navigate the menus of the phone easier. So for example, if I go to the settings application and let's say I go to display, maybe I'm trying to find a specific setting and I go to home screen. And now I wanna get back one step or one page, I can tap this back button. It'll take me back one page. If I tap it again, it'll take me back one page. So this is how you easily navigate between the menus of the phone. And if I tap it again, now I'm on the main screen of settings. If I tap it again, it's gonna take me out of the application. So just for the note, this helps you navigate back one step in whatever application that you're using. So those are your three main app, uh, excuse me, those are your three main navigation buttons. Now the next thing you'll need to know is what's called your notification panel. So um, when you swipe down from the top of the screen here, you can actually see um, different notifications that have come through your phone. You have all these little applications and sometimes things update in those applications. For example, you might have your email address on the phone and a new email comes through. Well, how would you know you have a new email? It will show up in this section, which is called your notification panel. It'll show you all the different notifications. It's notifying you of all the new uh, information that's coming through your phone, and then it will allow you to tap on it and get right to it. So this is my email section here. This is showing me any new emails I have. This is uh, recommendations from YouTube, different videos that they're thinking I may want to see. Um, and some other things, if I swipe up here, I can see some of my apps have updated or some of my apps have updates. So that's important to note, I may want to update my apps. And if you see something in here and you've already read it and you want to get rid of it, you just swipe over and that's how you get rid of it. And most things will just get rid of that easy. Same thing here, swipe over and that's gone. Now, above this section, you have what are called your notification switches. These are shortcuts that control various functions on your phone. So right now, you see these main six. Wi-Fi, my sound, so if I wanna turn the sound on or off or on vibrate, my Bluetooth, my rotation, if I turn the phone sideways, it will make the phone rotate with me, um, airplane mode, and my flashlight. Now, if I swipe down, it'll show you more options. So there's a few more options you can turn on and off. For example, your dark mode. If I tap here, it will put the screen in dark mode, turn all the white menus into black, and now it gives you a cool little look. So that's kind of cool. Also, when you swipe down, it will give you the brightness bar that you can use to brighten or dim your phone screen. So that's cool there. So you have other things you can control, for example, turning off your mobile data, smart view if you wanna connect your screen to a TV and show something from your phone to the TV, uh, do not disturb, all these other cool options here. Now you can always rearrange this menu here because um, the first six that you see are gonna be, they should be whatever the most important things are to you. So. Maybe you say, oh yeah, I want my flashlight to be up here. So whenever I swipe down, I know my flashlight's gonna be right there. And just like that, I can tap it and use my flash as a flashlight. But you might say, well, I don't fly too often. I wanna get rid of this airplane mode thing, no problem. So we would swipe down and we can go to the upper right corner, click on this little three dots here and tap on button order and now you can rearrange the order of the switches. So instead of having airplane mode here, maybe you say, you know, I'd rather have my location because I wanna turn that on and off quickly. You're gonna just hold down on it and then you can drag it up here and then I can hold down airplane mode and I can drag that down to the bottom here. And now 
I've just moved my GPS or location here and my flashlight here and hit done when you're finished. And now the first six are all things that are important to me. So GPS, flashlight, yada, yada, yada. If I want to turn on one of these, for example, Bluetooth, I can just tap right here. And now my Bluetooth menu is on. And just as a note, if you have Bluetooth speakers or headphones and you're trying to connect to them, you want to make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And when I tap that little icon, it turned blue. And now it's showing me any other Bluetooth devices. So if you were to put your headphones or your speakers into pairing mode, you could pair them or connect them really easy by just going to this uh, little setting here. So again, this controls all your various functions here. Um, now, a lot of you guys are probably wondering, how do I connect to Wi-Fi for my home or at a Starbucks or a Denny's? Well, this is your Wi-Fi icon right here. You wanna make sure it's lit up in blue so um, you can uh, get ready to connect. And if I actually put my finger on it and keep it on there for one second, it will take me to the Wi-Fi menu. And now I can look for different Wi-Fi menus that are available. So maybe you're at a coffee shop and the network is called Blessed 2G. I can tap on that. And now I can type in the password for that Wi-Fi. And now you're connected to Wi-Fi. So that's how you would easily connect to Wi-Fi on your phone. So again, these are all just little shortcuts at the top here that are gonna allow you to get to these um, different settings of the phone faster and also turn them on and off quicker. So that's your notification panel. Now next we're gonna go over um, applications. How do I find all my apps? How do I download new apps? What is that process? So you can swipe up with your finger and this is where you'll see all your apps. This is called your app drawer section. You'll find all the different apps on the phone. If you download a new application, it will show up in this section. Now, um, one thing to pay attention to are these folders here. So I have a Google folder and a Samsung folder. If I tap on the Google folder, this is where you'll find your YouTube app, Chrome, which is where you'll use to search the internet, your Gmail, if you need to add an email account to your phone, you would just tap on Gmail and you would put it in there. And your Google Maps, your photos, all your other different things. So this is where all the apps are gonna go that you download. Now next, let's talk about how do I get new apps? Maybe you wanna get a certain game or uh, an application that you've seen someone else have. How do I get that on my phone? You'll need to go to the Play Store. So you'll tap on the Play Store here now, one important thing to note is you cannot go to the Play Store until you have signed into a Google or Gmail account on the phone. Now, I have already signed into one, so it takes me right into the Play Store. But for you, if you tapped on this and it took you to a Google menu that's asking you to sign into a Google account, all you're going to need to do is simply type in your Gmail account. So it could be 1235 at gmail.com, whatever your Gmail is you would type it in there, and then it's gonna ask you to put in the password. You'll put in that password, and then it will sign you into your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, if you look at the bottom of the screen, and once again, it's not on this screen, but I'm just walking you through, for those of you that, that have not signed into a Gmail account yet, what you should see on your screen, at the bottom left corner, it should say create an account. If you tap on create account, it will allow you to quickly create a Google account that you can then sign into and then get access to the store where you can download all your applications. Okay, so now we're in the store and this is where you search for apps and games. You can also find um, movies and TV shows and books. If you tap here, movies and TV shows, you can download different things. They have all kinds of deals right here, 99 cents for a movie rental. They have books you can get. So every, all that's gonna be found in this application here. Now, let me walk you through how to download an app. Maybe you say, oh, I'd love to download Solitaire. I love playing Solitaire. No problem. Do a search. You can either type in the word Solitaire or you can use the microphone and just say Solitaire. Watch this. Solitaire. I love using the microphone because it's so much faster. I can just say it, solitaire comes up. And now there's many different options here. This is just like one that's an ad. So be aware things that say ad are 
paid advertisement. I like to look through this list here and look for the ones that have the highest star rating. So this one, for example, has a 4.8, so I want that one. So I'm gonna tap there, tap install, and now it's downloading the application. Now notice there was a green button that said install. So whenever you see that green button that says install, that's what tells you that it's a free application. If you ever see a price there instead of free, then that means that that app is not free. You'll have to pay for it. So just be aware if you see that. Now our app is downloaded and how do I know that? Because now the button says open. So we're gonna tap on open and it will take you right to your new application. And now you can play solitaire, that easy. Now guess what, when you're all done and you wanna go back to your home screen, what do you press? Pop quiz. That's right, the home button right here. Tap there and it will take you back to your main screen. Now you're probably saying to yourself, well that's great, now how do I get back to solitaire if I wanna play later? You can just, um, you would swipe up to our app drawer, swipe to your left, and there is our solitaire application right there. So remember, whenever you download a new application, it will always show up in this section. Okay, the last two things I wanna go over are sending text messages and how to make a phone call. So we're gonna go first to this app here, which is your text messaging app. So tap here. To create a new message, just tap on the blue icon. And first you'll need to type in the phone number of the person you wanna text. So let's type in a phone number. And then you're gonna tap on it or tap plus. And then at the bottom here, you'll see a little box. Tap in the box and type your message. Hi. And then you hit this little circle here and this will send the message for you. Now we don't currently have service on this phone so it's not gonna actually send the message but this is the whole process, it's super easy. Type in the phone number, you're going to then do the search and then just hit send and it's gonna send the message. So that's how you send the message. Now if we use our back button here, we can then go back to our menu here and this is where you'll get to see all the other conversations you have. Maybe you've sent a text to multiple people, they'll all show up in this section and you can just tap on whichever one you want to um, send another message to and you can just keep doing the same thing. Now here you'll have the phone app. We'll tap on the phone app here. You can just simply type in a phone number. Once you put in the number, you just tap this green button here and that will uh, make the phone begin dialing uh, the number and start your call. So super easy, just again, type in the phone number. You can just type in the zip code, the phone number, and the green button, and it will begin to make the call. One last thing actually, let me go over as well, how to take a picture, and that's just simply tapping the camera button at the bottom here. And you just find what you wanna take a picture of, and then tap the little white button here and that will take your picture. Now, if you want to take a video, you just need to tap on video down here. And now the button is gonna turn red and just tap the red button here. And now it's gonna start and you'll see it's counting up. That's how you know it's recording. And when you're, when you're recording, you can also take a picture um, at the same time by tapping on this little camera in the corner and snap pictures while I'm recording the video. And when you're finished, Tap on the little square here, and that will stop the video. So that's how you take a video. If you want to see the video or picture you took, tap on the circle here in the corner. And now I can swipe through and look at any videos or pictures that I've taken. As you can see, you got a pretty good little camera here. I can just zoom in to see the picture I took. So that's it guys, this has been how to use the Samsung Galaxy A11 for beginners. I hope you guys did find this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Leave me a comment down below if you found the video helpful as well. I always love to hear your feedback as well. Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.